Uh, Peterson, you are doing a lot of stuff at the Goose. Yeah. So let's let's talk some about that, about what you're doing here. Well, the nature of my work is very interdisciplinary. Yeah. So I get landed in a bunch of different places. Right. Some people think of me as a comic, right. which is true, but I'm also a storyteller right. and I'm a teacher, right. but I'm also touching on lots of different topics like LGBTQ plus stuff. Uh -huh. I'm a Bible scholar and I'm rabidly concerned about climate change. Yeah. So those are all topics that come up in my work and my presentations are sometimes like teaching, performance, and sometimes I'm in character as a totally different person on stage. Okay. So let's, here's my question, or one of them. Is it, is it, is there a way to knit those things together other than just they're all authentically part of you? Because you, because what you're talking about is getting siloed kind of. Sometimes yeah. you're in this silo, sometimes you're in that silo, sometimes you're in that silo. And it's Peterson Toscano who pulls those things together. I think if there are, you know, what the connections are for me is that I really care about people. Okay. So I don't see myself as an environmentalist, yeah. but I'm concerned about climate change because how it affects people. It's right. a human rights issue. Right. But it's also one of those topics that freak people out. Conversations shut down because right. they get afraid or they think they're going to be shamed. Yeah. Well, that's similar to conversation about sexuality in the Bible. Mm. And that's similar to just conversations about the Bible and alternative reading. Mm -hmm. So I've learned a long time ago that when you want to talk about a big issue that flips people out, you need to use storytelling mm. and comedy. Mm. So although the topics are different, they actually are very connected because they're big issues that we need to talk about but we're afraid to talk about. Mm. Mm. Let, let's talk about humor. That's something that's uh, kind of a lifelong passion of mine. I grew up with a, a father who was a huge stand-up fan. I have jumped into the world of improvisational comedy of late. Where, what is the role that humor plays in those moments, uh, where you're, particularly, particularly where you're talking about tough subjects for some folk? They have multiple roles, and they're, it's such a powerful, essential tool. Okay. So one thing that needs to be understood is I don't use comedy to make light of issues. Right, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. to shed light okay. on issues. Okay. Uh, and, and so that's really important. Physically, laughter relaxes people. Mm. Like, like physically laughing changes their bodies. Right. So laughter is really important to relax people. Huh. And it helps to open people up emotionally so that they're able to take in more. Comedy also does a couple of different things, particularly in character, when I'm okay. in character. It gets people to imagine different scenarios that they wouldn't normally imagine. Okay. But it's safe because it's funny. It's right. that what if sort of mm -hmm. comedy. Mm -hmm. And it helps people to come close to stuff that they're afraid of. Mm. Uh, so it's like putting oven mitts on to a really hot topic. Okay. Uh, so Not you can the get store. closer to it. Not the store hot topic. Okay, I'm just making sure. Their clothes don't work for me. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have the right color scheme for me at hot topic. Lots of like, Flames. Yeah, 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 they're into the flames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, makes sense with the name. Yeah. And and so what I find that comedy does is it helps people come closer to that issue because it's too too much to hit directly. Mm. And I also like taking a comic character and putting things in their mouth that you wouldn't expect. Okay. So I have this church lady character I play, Elizabeth Jeremiah from the Elizabeth Jeremiah Global Worldwide Ministries in Jesus. <laughs> and people assume they know who she is right. until she starts talking about climate change as a generational curse. And they're like, wait, what's going on here? There's something different going on Interesting, yeah. um, with, this, with this whole construct. So I like also in comedy, there's a turn of phrase with a double entendre yeah. to it. Yeah. So when I talk about climate change, I joke. I say, you know, with climate change, we're all in the same boat together. We're just not all on the same deck. Right. Right, right. And you can do stuff with comedy with these turns of phrases that have multiple meanings that can then like open up understandings. Mm, mm. There's, I'm curious what, I, what you, this character you're talking about in some ways, uh, I, I've seen people do it as almost like a satire, yeah. right? Where, where sat, and satire is a very precise type of comedy. Yes. I don't hear what you're doing as satire. It's no. a very different kind of approach. It isn't, and so it's a recognizable character. Yeah. But then I do something, so I play this character, Tony Bufuzio from the Bronx. Okay. So it comes out, hey everyone, my name is Tony Bufuzio, I'm from the Bronx. People make assumptions. Sure. 
But then at one point, Tony Bufuzio reveals like, well, you know, actually, I'm gay. Well, that's actually not true. I'm not gay. I'm bi. I'm bisexual, which doesn't mean I'm confused. It doesn't mean I'm greedy. <laughs> well, I am greedy, but not because I'm bi. <laughs> but, you know, when people ask me, you know, like, Tony Bufuzio, did your parents freak out when they found out you're, you know, bisexual? Actually, that week, it's the same week I came out by. It's the same week that I came out as a vegan. <laughs> My parents had a harder time with the vegan thing than the bi thing. So you don't expect Tony DeFuzio to be a bisexual vegan. Right, right. And, and so suddenly you can't say, oh, this isn't a stereotype, and right. this isn't even satire. This is something different. This is taking where you think you know where it's going to go and bending it in a whole new way. Mm. I've done that with the sissy character a number of times, okay. and I love the sissy character because I've been afraid of the sissy part of me. Mm. So I play this character, Chad, uh, who is first in my play doing time in the homo nomo halfway house as a repressed homosexual, believing that he was being made straight. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I... Which is very, I mean, that's very real dangerous stuff that we're talking about. Absolutely. Right? This is stuff that harms people. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And so he really, like, he, like, he believes that he's actually being butched up, right. right? He's like, you know, and I think a lot of it actually has to do with the weekly football clinics. It's really butched me up. <laughs> and at one point he talks about putting on the whole armor of God, because you know, you need to accessorize for warfare. <laughs> and so in the midst of that, it's silly, and in a way I'm, I'm leveraging on people mocking this person. Sure, right, yeah. But there's a moment in the play where he becomes humanized, yeah. and he talks about his brother who died of AIDS yeah. in the 90s, and suddenly the stereotype becomes an archetype and that is shocking to an audience because mm. they think they know who this person is but they're a real person with real feelings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's this whole other backstory to them and i i like doing that to, to audiences i don't want i don't want my audiences to, to be too comfortable i want mm. them to think i want them to be unex experience the unexpected yeah well and it, it strikes me a couple of theological pieces there there's the theology of surprise yeah. and the theology of discomfort mm. Uh, and I hear both of those at work and what you're talking about. Yeah. Is that? It, it is, and it's also, to me, something that you don't get a lot in churches, I really respect people's brains. I want to inspire critical thinking. Mm. So I don't want them to walk away with saying, oh, Peterson taught me this. Right. But wow, Peterson left me with this question I really need to think about. Nice. I, I want to do that more, and I think in many of our churches, even the way it's set up physically, you've got someone elevated from the front, and we're all impued, right. receiving knowledge and wisdom. Impued. Oh, that's a great impued. word. Impued. <laughs> it's like embedded. <laughs> yeah. Impued, and you're right. locked in that place. It's, it's a lecture. Yeah, it's a lecture uh, architecture. Yeah. And, and I recognize what I do is somewhat like that. Sure. But doing it in the form of performance art and putting out lots of questions yeah. is I'm trying to do something different with, with yeah. the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it makes me think of when I was a regular pre preacher. When I was a regular preacher. I had issues <laughs> no, you're, internally. You're uh, yeah. There's some uh, products you can take for that. I, let know. me know. Yeah. Um, so uh, when I was preaching regularly, um, <laughs> that still doesn't work, does no. it? Anyway, uh, but I talked about uh, a lot of times what I intended to do in my sermons was kind of a popcorn kernel. Uh -huh. Where, you oh, know, when yeah, you're eating yeah. popcorn and there's that one uncooked kernel and it's it gets stuck, stuck in the back up. of your teeth and you're gnawing on it for days yeah, yeah. and it would fly. Like that, that's what I hear you doing is yeah. putting that popcorn kernel that people are gonna have to kind of play with before they can mm -hmm. work it out for themselves. Yeah, that's definitely true, yeah. It's been very um, relaxing in a disconcerting way being at Wild Goose. Yeah. It's been relaxing in this disconcerting way because um, I don't have to worry about climate change while I'm here because nobody's talking about it. Like literally, I feel like I'm on another planet, like wow. one that is not warming. Wow. And this is not a critique necessarily of, of Wild Goose. It's kind of what I see in lots of progressive mm -hmm. spaces where no one here is denying the reality of climate change. They're just not interested in the conversation. Yeah. And everything that people are talking about is so important. Yeah. You know, racial justice, immigration, the detention of people unlawfully. Yeah. These are incredibly important things. Yeah but they're also within the context of a time of a rapidly changing climate. Right, right. And we live in a country that has contributed more to it than any other country. Right. right. And we're not having that conversation. And when we do, it's this ridiculous shallow conversation about how we can become better consumers. Right, right. And we can like right. recycle and lower our carbon footprints and put up a, 
a, a solar panel, and I'm not against those things, but I also know they're futile mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in, in scale of the problem the that we yeah. have. Yeah, it drops in the ocean. Yeah. But it's also asking churches to do something that they're not good at yeah. while ignoring what they're really good at. Mm. Churches, clergy who have been trained, know how to comfort people who are grieving. Know how to help people process strong emotions. Mm. Know how to help people get through a really hard time. Churches at their best are great at building community and at helping people who are suffering. Mm. Why are we not having that conversation around climate change instead of having churches go through a greening process and mm -hmm. putting up mm -hmm. a, a solar panel? Yeah. To me, you're wasting your, your energy and your resources mm. when the, what a church needs to do is ask, what is my role on this? very rapidly and new plan rapidly right. changing a new planet right. and I want to have those deeper conversations uh, because I don't believe that if you're already passionate about racial justice if you're passionate about immigration that you have to like say oh wait 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 climate change I need to lay it all down right, and right. do climate change no 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 you don't need to have a new passion for climate change because climate change affects what you care about yeah but it's about doing it within the context of the time in which we live where the hallmark of our lives is already being altered because of climate change, and we are not taking the courage to have that conversation. And instead, at most, we maybe will mock deniers, thinking that by accepting the reality of climate change is progressive, but re, you know, admitting that reality is not progressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll keep making us uh, surprised and uncomfortable. I'll try. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.